As consumers, we are bombarded by it at every turn, like the Incredible Hulk being bombarded by gamma rays. But what makes some media endure, while others are banished to the forgotten black hole of obscurity, never to be heard from again? Who or what decides this? Hetero life mate Steve and Yehel want to know, and they want to know now. This is Obscurity Now. now, now, now. And what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Obscurity Now, the show that takes a look at weird and forgotten pieces of media, and then we decide if they should be remembered for all of human history or tossed into the black hole of obscurity, never to be heard from again. Uh, my name is Steve, and I am one of the hosts, and with, with me is a guy who wrestled such a horrible match at WrestleMania, it didn't even make it into the dark matches. It's... Yeah, hell, hello, Steve. How are you? I just realized that I had not adjusted my the exposure on my camera before uh-huh. launching, so I apologize for looking uh, ghostly and ghastly uh, in the opening <laughs> segments. But Steve, oh. uh, how are you, buddy? How how it do, G? Oh, oh God, uh, well, I was doing great. To, are you are you trying to use uh, slang, '90s esque slang? Like I I think this show was trying to use uh, slang and uh, failed. Uh, uh, quite miserably, miserably at using accurate uh, slang. Actually, G is like the only thing that they said, slang that people used to say in the 90s, that I was like, okay. Are you trying to imply that one Sam Hamm, uh, screenwriter of such classic films as Batman and Batman Returns, who is a Caucasian, are you saying he yep. just wrote for black people and didn't actually like try to talk to any and figure out how they actually sound. Are you implying that? Is that what you're saying? I, I well, when he was trying to write like the urban black people or like the mm-hmm. hip hop, you know, centric <laughs> ones or right. whatever. Like, uh, yes, yes. Oh um, wow. I feel like this is somebody. This is like written by the whitest guy ever, mm-hmm. and uh, he was like trying to come up with like you know hip hop type lingo or whatever and like slang and. It's like he had never heard it before. It wasn't just written uh, by two, one of the whitest guys ever. It was right, created right, right, right. by two of the whitest guys ever. Yes. And we will get to that. If you are confused about what we're talking about, we are talking about the TV Kid movie. And Clay. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> House Party Four! Oh, in your house. We're actually, talking about Kid and Play the Rap Group. It was created by two white guys. <laughs> I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of producers who are just like, eh, let me just, you know, whatever. But no, this is Mantis. Yeah. Uh, it's a, a TV movie that uh, came out um, in '94, which was later preceded by a TV show. What is your history with Mantis, you hell? The TV show, uh, not the actual insect or arachnid or whatever it is. Oh, oh, I might have watched the wrong thing. I was just <laughs> watching Nat, Nat Geo in mm-hmm. preparation for this. Um, no, I remember the uh, the commercials, never watched it. Mm-hmm. And I didn't watch it because I remember thinking, wow, this looks lame. Uh, and now I was 14. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, this aired in January, so I would have been 13 when this aired. But yeah, I, I thought it looked lame. Like, he looked lame. All right. Well, um, as we've uh, what about you? as we've discussed uh, with Briscoe County and VR Five, I watched a lot of Fox back in the uh, in the nineties, uh, mostly because that's where the Simpsons were. So I have a feeling you might say that. Yeah. So I was just like, well, let me see what else is on this uh, channel, and you know, I was probably just too lazy to change the channel to, or didn't even know what else. There was probably only four other channels to change it to back then. Who knows? Um, yeah. But yes, I do want to say uh, before we for before I forget because I missed it initially here. Uh, we do have Stadium Arts again in the chat. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Stry, for joining. Stry. Appreciate you. Mm-hmm. And I see. Uh, oh, I thought I saw. Oh, no, I guess not. Yes, Stadium Arts, welcome aboard. Um, Yes, uh, so yeah, I watched uh, the Mantis TV movie and um, a couple of episodes of the show uh, here and there. Um, I liked it back then, and, um, you know, we will see how I thought about it uh, this time around. Yeah, Um, now, did you like the, because from what I, I didn't watch any of the TV show episodes, mm -hmm. just the movie that preceded the show. Uh, the show looks like it was changed uh, quite drastically. Oh yeah, uh, they. Um, I, they f- I'm sorry. Continue. So basically, like, because like in Mantis, I mean, you know, we're kind of joking around about Sam Ham like writing, uh, excuse me, trying to like write hip dialogue or whatever mm-hmm. and failing miserably at it. <laughs> but 
there but there are like a lot of like strong like african american uh characters sure. in this Absolutely. that are that are like you know like strong performances or well written mm-hmm. well presented um in a way that maybe you wouldn't see you know black people always presented at the time so mm-hmm. there's there some positives there but like then in the tv show they like got rid of all those people and then there's only like w- there's only two black people one the mantis guy mm-hmm. the main guy and like his housekeeper <laughs> like, <laughs> wait really? was was it one of the um uh like his remember he has two helpers from africa were they no, in they the get, series they, they get rid of, they get rid of them too yeah i think it, maybe <laughs> the only person that returned is the guy that plays mantis right well maybe they sort of reverse diversify <laughs> Like, yeah, it, it was it was like they wanted to simplify from what I read. Uh, they wanted to simplify the because because they are trying to do like a complex like story with like multiple like plot lines in the movie. Um, you know, they're tackling racism, corruption and the government, mm-hmm. like all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, if if I could piggyback off of that, like, um, you know, basically, you know, Disney made a huge deal when the Black Panther movie uh, came out and basically the same big deal was made 20 years prior when Mantis came out. Uh, They were like, hey, look, we've got a black superhero for you, which has never been done before. Um, And uh, yeah, I mean, and I don't know if you noticed, but they actually do have a black director as well. Um, Oh, I did not notice that. Yep. yep. I mean, we're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, But uh, as we both just uh, stated, yeah, the the dudes who wrote this and created it, as white as white could be, um, and you... I, I feel like they had good intentions. But oh, absolutely. They should have consulted with uh, maybe some other <laughs> one. People. Yeah, it's like uh, <laughs> hey, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe maybe call up a person or two of color. I just picture uh, Sam Raimi and Sam Ham like getting together, and they're like, "Okay, Fox wants a black superhero. Like, what do you got?" And he's like, "Well, uh, I got a uh, Mantis here," and it's like, "Hmm." Uh, like this looks this is pretty good. Like, uh, is this how black people actually talk? And the other one's like, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, of course it is. It's like, shouldn't we ask one? No, I asked a bunch of them. Like, it, the, trust me, it's good. Let's roll with it. Right, right, and, right. Uh, and then that. But it's so funny because it's like, like the even the people who are supposed to be like from the street, mm-hmm. like they're like he'll, they'll like the dialogue. They'll say something like really odd like are you trying to spade me yeah (laughs) you know know, right so they say like a line where it's like you know like street plugging or whatever Mm -hmm. but then their next like 10 lines are just like very normal right dialogue from like you'd hear from anybody like you know in life you know that isn't like in a gang or whatever but i would say that sam ham i mean he's the one who wrote the screenplay this is sam raimi's uh, story i guess they sort of got Mm -hmm. together you know, came up with Mantis and Sam Raimi was just like, it's the two Sams. We'll just call them that. Uh, and he's yeah. like, yeah, why don't you go write it? And I I think they pretty much got all their dialogue from, or for their African-American dialogue from other movies. Like, so Sam Ham's channeling like black exploitation from the seventies, like Shaft and, um, you know, uh, I mean, maybe he actually read some Luke Cage comic books, which when that Luke Cage show was coming out on Netflix, Everyone made like a big deal that, you know, all those comics were written by white guys and they were just assuming that uh, this is how, you know, black people talked. Right. Um, so, yeah, they didn't go and actually, uh, you know, talk to any current black people at the time. They just got all their uh, their dialogue from from other media yeah. written by uh, other white guys. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, and, and again, like I do think the intentions are good here. They're sure. not like de- they're not like doing like a negative depiction of black people or anything like that. Oh, no. Uh if, if anything, it's like pretty well, you know, encompasses all kinds of like uh, people, you know, at different like stages of their life. Yes. You know, people of color. So I agree. Um, um, so I, again, I don't I don't think they they had like negative intentions. It, it, it just comes off cartoonish. Right, really right, right. And like I know a lot of uh, there's a trend going on right now in media that they say, like, you know, only a certain person from this race can write those characters from that race. And like. I don't really agree with that 100%, but if you're going to write for a character that's not your race, you should probably do a little bit of research, you know? Yeah, Uh, and And, and I think it's more, I think think more of the problem here is like, 
he it's it the, the, it's when he does writing for characters that are living a lifestyle he knows nothing right, about right, so, right. Like, like the gangbangers like <laughs> everybody else like because there's lots of characters black characters in this show that aren't like in gangs those you know, like, gangbangers like, were like the, the warriors basically <laughs> right. there's like the news reporter mm-hmm. the antoine guy I mean, I mean i guess you could kind of say he's technically in a gang sure uh the doctor that plays mantis or whatever Dr. like Hawkins, there's all kinds yeah. of like yeah, there's all kinds of like black characters, and in then you have and like gang. the real and Africans well from Africa. Yeah, his helpers, oh, yeah, yeah. They, yeah they, his they, students. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you ready to dive into this sucker? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm already. Doing I, I just it. don't think Sam was ever in a gang. Either, <laughs> either of the Sams. I, yeah, yeah. Is what I'm saying. So if you're if you're not in a gang, if you if you take one thing away from this podcast, folks, if you're not a gang member and you want to write for gang members. Mm-hmm. Do some research. Yeah, at least listen to a rap album or two, I suppose. All right, let's do this thing. <laughs> Welcome to your feature presentation. All right. Uh, so, Mantis, as I said before, it actually premiered January 24th, 1994. And then was preceded by one season of a TV show. Uh, The synopsis here for the movie is... A brilliant, wheelchair-bound scientist invents a form of exoskeleton called the Mechanically Augmented Neurotransmitter Interception System, a.k.a. Mantis, that turns him into a superhero and gives him the ability to fight the crime wave that is engulfing his city. Now, before th- this movie or the show came out, did you ever read any Mantis comic books, you hell? No, Steve. Somehow it, I, I didn't get to them. That's because there aren't any. They made oh, Mantis is up. That, is that? <laughs> is that what it is? I gotcha. I gotcha. Uh, no, I, I knew that there weren't because I tried looking up the comic books. No, oh, That nice. don't exist. That's all. Hey, well, good. I'm glad to uh, hear that you're you know, putting in the extra mile in the research department. Yes, yeah, so somebody somebody has to because the Sam Raimi and Sam Hayes, <laughs> I put in more effort into researching Mantis than they did yeah. into researching for the script. Probably. Uh, so the director here, um, African American, as I said, it's uh, Eric Lanville, and um, he is still working today. And he's basically a big time TV director. He's directed episodes of Quantum Leap, NYPD Blue. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Legends of Tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, still in the sort of pseudo comic book TV game. Um, yeah, Black Lightning I saw he directed as well, mm-hmm. like a bunch of episodes of that. Uh, he didn't direct um, any Star Trek, though, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, how good is he, really? Well, yeah, I, I suppose. And our writers here, I'm going. Sam Hamm wrote the screenplay. He's also one of the creators. As I said before, wrote Batman, Batman Returns. And this was fun. I didn't realize he wrote this. Monkey Bone. Do you remember Monkey Bone with Brendan Fraser? Yeah, I never watched it, but I mean I remember I remember its existence. Yeah. Oh, that's a <laughs> that might be one uh worth us uh covering. It's pretty weird. Sure. Uh, and then of course we've got uh Sam Raimi and some of his writing credits. Uh obviously we all know that he created uh The Evil Dead and Army of Darkness and all that stuff. Uh, he was a writer on the Hudsucker Proxy. Um, of course, he wrote and directed Dark Man. One of his earlier films is a Crime Wave, and he's written episodes of Herc and Xena, which he also created. And uh, in case you're wondering why we're even talking about Mantis here in 2022, it's because, you know, Sam Raimi's directing uh, Doctor Strange 2. And I just know, I have a feeling that our good friend Mantis just might show up in the the background of one of those multiverses. What do you think, you hell? Mm? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I could I could see it happening. <laughs> no. Stranger it's things have gonna, happened. Like, it's not gonna happen. I could see Wait, it. Wait, no, Disney Disney would technically own Mantis since they bought Fox. So, man. You know, it's just something to think about. Something to think about. Yeah, yeah. So uh, our producers and production companies include uh, Wilberforce Productions, which I just thought is a funny name. And, of course, Renaissance Pictures, which is Sam Raimi's company, and uh, Universal Television and distributed by Fox. Uh, So uh, why don't you take us through some of the highlights of the cast here? Yeah, and highlights is right because there's there's, there's a a long cast, yeah. All right, we're going to start off with uh, Carl Lumley. Mm -hmm. He plays uh, Dr. Hawkins, uh, a.k.a. Mantis himself. Uh, He has been in a bunch of stuff. Not a guy that I would say is like 
ever like the, the leading man per se, but right. you know his face. Sure, and um, the voice he does. Uh, he voices some of the Justice League or something, right? Does it does say it in there? Yes, Young Justice. There yeah. you go. Okay. Uh, he's the voice of um, Matt Moore's. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's like M apostrophe A T T. Anyways, uh, but he's been in a bunch of stuff in CIS Los Angeles, mm-hmm. Supergirl. Uh, people might know him from that. Um, I actually recognized him from. Uh, he's in one episode of Battlestar Galactica. Uh, he does an awesome job in that, and he he has like a starring guest a starring guest starring role. He's like the focus of the episode. Nice. But uh, anyways, then we've got Gina Torres, which is probably the other most recognizable person. I feel like uh, maybe Marsha Cross. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, Gina Torres, very young Gina Torres. Mm-hmm. Um, you know her from Firefly, Serenity, Matrix, Suits. Um, Suits, I think, is the most recent thing she's done. Um, but yeah, she's always, she's, she's always working. She's always on TV, always doing something. Um, then we've got, uh, Steve James who plays, uh, very smooth Antoine. Um, and he was, I've never heard of this guy before. You haven't? Oh man. No. From American Ninja. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. He's from American Ninja. This TV movie is the last thing he did. Oh, wow. By the oh way. man. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he was in a bunch of action movies, uh, and I was reading that like he was often kind of cast as the sidekick or secondary yep. character, despite being like usually the better actor. Of, <laughs> yeah, and the ben in better and he, shape. And he yeah. Is, like, a, yeah, and he is like a pretty damn good actor. I thought. He yeah, was I really thought good. him and Carl Lumley were great in this. Yeah, like, yeah. In this they, schlock. I, I, <laughs> honestly, everybody gives pretty good performances. Yeah, they like, really nobody do. Really, yeah. No, nobody phones it in. Mm-hmm. Um. Besides that, we've got uh, Marsha Cross, who I mentioned earlier. She doesn't play a huge role in this, but I wanted to mention her because I think a lot of people know her from Desperate Housewives. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have Philip Baker Hall. Uh, I can't. I think he plays Stark. Uh, no, that was Francis McCarthy that plays Stark. He plays Smitty. And I only mentioned Philip Baker Hall because he's another guy that you just like know. Mm-hmm. His face has been in a ton of things. Uh, Rush Hour. Uh, a bunch of stuff. Nice. Um, then we've got uh, this is the last one I'm going to mention. And then if there's anybody else you think is worth mentioning, please go ahead. It is the guy that plays Chief Stark? It is played by Francis X McCarthy. Uh, <laughs> he was I didn't really recognize this guy myself, but he's been in a bunch of stuff. He was most recently in Dear White People, ironically because he's playing a racist mm, uh, nice. in this in, in Mantis. But yeah, he was in 2019's uh, Dear White People, a few episodes of that. Um, he was in Cat 8, which is one of my favorite uh, Disaster B movies. Like, it's f- terrible. Oh, I've um, never heard of that. Yeah, there's like a Cat 5 movie and a Cat 8. Yeah, oh, they're nice. Not good. But yeah, another guy that's just been in a bunch of stuff. But uh, is anybody that you think is worth mentioning out of this very large, robust cast? Mm, well, uh, we actually get a uh, cameo from one Sam Raimi himself, uh, but we'll yep. get through that when we get to the walkthrough. But I think you um, you covered all the uh, the main people quite well, and um, I think we're uh, ready to jump into the walkthrough. What do you think? Sounds good. All right. So we uh, open with a shady dude exiting his car. It's nighttime in the city. And uh, then he fires a gun at like power line at the transformer box on the uh, on some power mm-hmm. lines, as you do, as causing you do. the power to go out in the area of the city. And like, you really, uh, you know, probably need to suspend your disbelief in a bits and pieces of this movie because it's uh, really just sort mm-hmm. of like it's very pulpy. Um, yeah, it's just you just have to sort of go with it. <laughs> so a bomb yeah. is then armed inside a bank and it explodes. Uh, and then several well-armed men just sort of appear out of nowhere. It's weird because they never show them entering the bank. It's like they've been hiding there like all day <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, best not to think about it. Uh, they begin grabbing money. Then uh, one of the thugs, there's like a noise, and then a thug just sort of freezes. And his co-thug is like, uh, hey, hey, what's wrong, man? What's wrong? Um, co-thug. Yeah, co-thug. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the guy looks over to the entrance of the vault and to see a man in a trench coat with a weird helmet with buggy eyes just standing there. And it's Mantis. And uh, then Mantis shoots something towards the camera. Bam. Fade to black. 
Now, uh, now we're paralyzed <laughs> with, the next with excitement. Um, <laughs> yes. So when you first saw Mantis standing there uh, in the opening, uh, what did you? What were you thinking? I was thinking this is going to be a long ninety minutes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I mean, or, I didn't think. I, I mean, I thought. I thought. I, same thing. I thought when he was when I was thirteen that he looks lame. The the, the helmet's lame. The suit is lame. He, uh, the actor's fine, actually. He's not lame, mm-hmm, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, like, I just y- thought You know, lame. in the uh, TV series, they sort of, uh, I would say they cut away a little bit of the cheese. Like, the helmet is not as, like, huge. And for whatever reason, like, you know, he wears the suit in the TV movie here. You know, as in suits, I mean, like, tie and, like, jacket and stuff. And they got rid of that in the, uh, because why would you cover up your awesome-looking exoskeleton? Like I was gonna ask you, I, do you prefer the suit or not the suit? I don't know. I mean, they're they're both like bad choices for their own reasons. Uh, it, it, it's it's you like you don't think the exo suit looks th- cool at least, in just in the realm of sci-fi. Mm-hmm. No, no, I don't think it looks cool. It, it's like, would you rather have diarrhea or vomit in your hand? Oh, I like, disagree. Uh, I think the exo suit looks cool. I mean, the helmet is a little much to digest. I'll give you that. But I think, like, maybe if the helmet was different, then you could be like, hey, yeah. that's a cool exos, um suit. The, the amazing thing about the helmet is that um, it's uh, huge, like you mentioned. Mm. It's quite large. Yet we can still see pl- m- much of his face. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you, you can recognize this guy a mile away. Yeah, but in the dark, like, it just looks creepy, man. Like the, uh, like the moth man is coming to get you or something. Yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess. But anyways, uh, we're already thirty minutes in, and uh, we're only down all to right, the first all scene. Right. So let, let me let me shut up and let you. Uh... Hey, I'm the one asking the questions here. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so that was basically a commercial break. Uh, now the police are on the scene of the bank. They enter the vault to find the thugs frozen in place. All the money still there, and a tiny mantis statue. Now we cue the uh, opening uh, mantis uh, credit sequence. Um, I have to say, I think the score is pretty awesome. Like, what do you think yeah. by Joe LaDuca or Duca? Um, yeah, I, I actually totally agree. I thought a very cinematic score. Uh, sounds like something you would hear in a superhero movie today, even. Yeah, he uh, is actually... By, by the way, uh, I am uh, looking at the video feed, and I, I am it. a tiny... Okay, It's best not but, to um, comment on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, music's good. Music's very good. Yeah, he is also the composer of Army of Darkness, in case anyone cares. So uh, Sam nice. Raimi got him the job. All right, so now we're watching a new show, uh, and they're showing. Uh, they're talking about a special police task force run by uh, Chief Stark, who is basically sort of the the big bad in the. Um, in the Mantis universe. Also, the city that Mantis takes place in is called Oceanside or Ocean City, which is obviously not a real city, which is very pulpy, very uh, like, you know, Batman, basically, because, spoiler alert, Gotham City is not a real place. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, you think about that tonight (laughs) when you're tossing and turning in your bed. Okay, um, so, uh, all right, two dudes are watching um, and commenting on the news show. Uh, One of those dudes is uh, Yuri, um, who is uh, basically a reporter at this news station, and the other guy is basically just sort of an unimportant uh, cameraman or editor or something like that. Uh, Then a woman comes in and says, and this is is what it begins, the... um, the sort of street talk, the non-street street talk. Mm-hmm. The white woman um, who, I've got her name written down here later. She's semi-important. Um, she comes in and says, Yuri, two b-boys are asking for you. <laughs> like, is it a b-boy a break dancer? Like, I didn't, Yeah, I think so. I don't think those guys were break dancers. Um, but, it may, you know, maybe it's just showing how racist, racist she is. She just... Yeah, I, th- I think that's what it is. It's supposed to show that, like... Because they like kind of go out of their way to be like to tell you right away, hey, these this character's racist, this one's the racist, and this one's racist too. And, like they kind of like want to make it very clear. Man, I, I feel like we're we're in 1994 all over again, and some because because it, it was like, well, no, like I they they, they kind of I, I mean, and honestly, like I don't really have a problem with mm-hmm. it per se, but uh, it, it is a little jarring how obvious they make it it's but uh it's they, 70s black exploitation man right because that's yeah. how it is in like, like the, the, every dolomite movie every shaft movie right. yeah 
Stark, the guy running for mayor, is mm. racist. Oh, yeah. uh, Smitty, the the scientist mm. guy that works at the corner, he's a racist. <laughs> oh man, uh, that one, that scene was lady, intense. Yeah. About. Okay. Oh, when he's like, oh, when he calls like Gina Torres' character like an affirmative action. Yeah, pilot. yeah. I was like, dang, like, Jesus, that's buddy. rough. <laughs> he just got he just got mad just because she was asking questions. He just got so mad. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get to that in yeah. a second. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, it's okay. Um, now, um, yeah, now we're actually at that scene. Um, we're at the morgue, um, and uh, Doctor Woman, whose name is uh, uh, Amy, she's asking for a uh, tox screen, and uh, she scan or actually. Smitty leaves and asks um, uh, Amy to do a tox screen. She scans the wrong body. Uh, and she says, uh, she tells Smitty that this boy was murdered. And uh, he comes back and says, uh, yeah, like, you know, how dare, basically, how dare you question me? Like, uh, I'm not going to let some affirmative action hire, like, you know, question my work, blah, blah, blah. So now um, Amy is talking to uh, Yuri Barnes. That's his name from, uh, from before. They go get lunch. Uh, Yuri shows Amy uh, a frozen thug after a bank robbery on a, um, like, a, what do they call those things? They had, like, a name. It's basically a portable, like, VCR attached to a, uh, a TV or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then they talk about Mantis, and Yuri thinks that Stark is the one who's behind Mantis. And the, and the one cool thing I do like about Mantis, and obviously you can only do this like once like in your pilot or in your first issue if you're writing a comic book uh, like i am <laughs> uh is nobody knows who mantis is so there's a lot of uh, they do a lot of red herrings and stuff uh, but as you will see mm -hmm. as we continue to move on so dudes um around her uh okay so uh, amy is in a car um, there's some random dudes on the street and they uh, signal at each other. They begin throwing boxes. Uh, yeah, sh all right. So Amy is stuck in rush hour traffic. These like street thugs signal at each other and they start throwing boxes in front of all the cars. And somehow that's supposed to be enough to make people trapped in their cars. Um, they then roller. Well, they're also like on roller skate. Oh, okay, you're yeah. They it. then rollerblade to uh, everyone's windows and ask for their money. So they're robbing everyone on rollerblades. I can't think of anything more '90s than that. I just wish they were wearing right. fanny packs, you know. Uh, <laughs> so one of the cars is in disguise. It transforms into wait for it, the Mantis Mobile, which is actually called the Chrysalis. Uh, Mantis. All right. The car then takes off and basically hovers over the traffic. <laughs> Mantis then hangs down from his hovering car, just like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like those crane... Like, like Sting being like... <laughs> yes. Sting and WCW being like let down from the raft. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. I didn't even think about that. They're, they're so similar. Oh, my goodness. If only that actually, actually, let's get a little more obscure since there's obscurity now. Do you remember when Dustin Runnels, aka uh, Goldust, came to WCW as and they made him a character called Seven? And they had him like fly down the, the ramp. And that's how they did it. They just had him like on a wire, <laughs> just like moving forward down the aisle, just like in Mantis. Right. So I can see how. When they were probably writing this, that they thought it was gonna look cool, but really it do it doesn't. Yeah, it's just it a, it's like cool. a uh, claw machine in an arcade, and he's like grab yeah, it's like grabbing yeah. an action figure, and he's just sort of dangling there. Anyone could easily yep. just shoot him and kill him, but exactly, I guess, he's he's like a, a target, like an easy target. Right. Like it makes no right. sense. So basically, they're going for style over logic here, which in the superhero universe is okay, somewhat. Um, but anyway, we'll continue. Uh, so where was that? Okay, so he hangs from his hovercraft, and then he starts shooting. So Mantis has this like wrist-mounted, um, like shooting device in his exoskeleton that shoots out. Uh, uh, in the movie, they're little mantises, and when they, they touch you, it freezes you in place. Uh, in the show, they just change it to regular, like, darts or whatever, which makes way more sense. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, Mantis hangs from his hovercraft, uh, and uh, yeah, he stops all the thugs, and he returns a purse to an old lady. Of course, classic superhero stuff. Some police helicopters try to catch Mantis, but he flies into a tunnel, and then his car transforms into a, a regular car again, and they're just like, oh, we lost him, giving up, going home. Uh, and then, of course, we see uh, Amy, and she's just like, oh, Mantis. I think she actually swooned <laughs> after she saw Mantis. 
So uh, <laughs> now we're back to the Ocean City Police Department, and uh, they're interviewing, um, or uh, was it Yuri? I think it's, or maybe it's a different cop, um, is uh, interviewing some uh, weirdo, and that weirdo is being played by none other than Sam Raimi himself, the director of the original Spider-Man trilogy and Evil Dead and all that other stuff. And he does show up in movies occasionally, but it's it's rare. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's not really important. This is kind of funny. So Amy um, enters the room, but or tries to enter basically the morgue, but one of Chief Stark's uh, thugs uh, stops her, says it's a classified area, um, but she sort of finds her way in. Oh, yeah, but then a, a man in a wheelchair just sort of wheels by her uh, with his uh, two helpers, and this ends up being Dr. Miles Hawkins, who's been called in as a consultant. And uh, so basically Amy sort of argues her way in any way. And Dr. Hawkins mm-hmm. is like, I think we need a fresh perspective. So they allow her to be in there. Um, and then um, Dr. Hawkins asks for a fresh frozen thug because they, I guess the one they have is, has expired. And of course, Amy gets <laughs> all, you know, oh, that was a person, blah, blah, blah. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, basically that scene was important just to have Dr. Hawkins meet Amy for the first time. Uh, spoiler alert, Dr. Hawkins is Mantis. <gasps> anyway, uh, dun, dun, dun. so now we're at a press conference. Uh, Amy and Yuri are in- attending. Amy tells Yuri um, she's barred from going to the lab because of um, because of Stark and his whatever. And, and then we're introduced to Steve James playing uh, Pike, Antoine Pike. Um, and he's basically like this big, uh, you know, I'm going to clean up the community kind of guy by putting the gangs to work in like YMCA type places and stuff like that. Uh, Pike tells the reporters that um, the two gangs in Ocean City, one of them are called the 10Ks, the other are called the Dragons. They're at peace mm-hmm. because of him. And uh, then he brings the reporters over to doc- Dr. Hawkins. And, um, and the, th- the funny thing I like about Dr. Hawkins is like much, I guess, very similar to one uh, Bruce Wayne who is, uh, you know, masquerades as like this uh, billionaire playboy who's just, you know, uh, living life and doesn't really care about right. the common man. He's actually Batman. And uh, they paint Dr. Hawkins, or he paints himself as this, like, super ultra-conservative who, like, you know, says that basically black people need to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps, blah, blah, blah. But in actuality, Mm -hmm. he's Mantis. Um, So, uh, um, let's see. Amy tells Yuri they're going to find out who's behind Mantis. And now we're at a basketball court. Um, there's a guy there. I just kept calling him the coach. I can't remember the character's name, but he's a significant later. Um, the coach breaks up a fight between the basketballers. Amy shows up and he asks where Antoine or she asks where Antoine. Yeah. He's like a counselor. Cause like, it's like the gangs are there playing. Right. Yeah. He's it's a like coach slash yeah, counselor. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, Amy asks where Pike is and he's like, Oh, you know, he's got lots of friends. Like, <laughs> Anyway, they yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. they implying that like oh yeah, lots of women come to like, right exactly. See him. He's Steve James, and he's such a pimp. Anyway, um, uh, they look over and see um, Pike doing gymnastics, and Amy's like, hmm, I wonder if that's Mantis. Uh, Pike then shows Amy around the YMCA, shows that he's got gang members working together to fix up the place. Uh, Pike says he was an original uh, OG gang member before he got reformed. Uh, Amy says that uh, they. she talks about the body that she um, scan- accidentally scanned earlier, uh, named Nathaniel, said that he was murdered, and all of a sudden, like, Antoine gets... Or she lets it slip that he may have been murdered, and Antoine Pike... Well, yeah, because Antoine Pike says that he OD'd, and then she's like, oh, he didn't die of an overdose. Right, right, right. And then he gets, like, really sort of angry, <laughs> and... Um, yeah, he says something like, uh, I, you know, I, if, if you're telling me that he if you're telling me he got iced or something, you know, he uses some weird, yeah. <laughs> not real street talk. Uh, yeah. If you're telling me so, someone far fungled him. <laughs> I'll, uh... It's also 1950s, like detective street talk. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh... if somebody if you're telling me somebody scrambled his yolk, I'll. Uh... 
<laughs> Anyways, what he actually says is that, you know, if you're telling me somebody killed him or whatever, I'll tear them apart with my bare hands. If someone jangled his yin-yang balls, you gotta tell me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> if someone opened his Christmas present... <laughs> We could do this all episode. Oh my god! Uh, so anyway, she exits the um, the community center or YMCA, whatever you want to call it, and so of course she uh, immediately gets harassed by thugs. And Pike shows up and takes them out, American Ninja style. Amy uh, is then with um, Yuri again. There's a lot of them just sort of hanging out and talking about the plot. Um, he's, she says that Mantis is working alone and then also tells him that he, she thinks that it's Pike. And, uh, and I also forgot to mention that Yuri is not a fan of, uh, of Pike. I don't know if he's uh, jealous, but, uh, yeah, he doesn't seem to like him too much. Right. So now we are at the Mantis Mansion. Try saying that five times fast. Um, mm-hmm. Well, really, it's just Dr. Hawkins' mansion. Uh, and he's getting stretched out by his uh, physical therapist in a nice, like, infinity pool right by the beach. She tells him his condition is getting worse. And uh, <laughs> just like, a, I love how he's like a man of science, but still, he's also a man. And he's just like, eh, I'm fine. What are you talking about? Like, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, need yeah. any facts getting in the way of my manliness. Uh, anyway, uh, and then Amy uh, shows up, and um, Dr. Hawkins, um, or she uh, talks to Dr. Hawkins' helpers. I can't remember their names. I have it written down here somewhere. They're like odd sort of African names uh, from actual mm-hmm. Africa. Uh, right, right. Uh, anyway, she says, uh, she asked the doctor what his interest in the frozen thugs are, and basically he's like... Um, you know, I'm really interested in this uh, formula. I want to an- the formula that's freezing them. He wants to analyze it. Amy then says that she thinks uh, Stark wants the uh, the formula to help control crowds, and uh, then Doctor Hawkins sends his helper to find out. Oh yeah, I, he's like, no, no, I don't think so. I support Doctor Stark like 100 percent in whatever it is that he wants to do because again, mm-hmm. he's pretending to be an ultra conservative. Like it's funny if Ma- Mantis was made like four uh, like four years ago, it wouldn't be a, a Stark. It would be like Trump, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, anyway, so uh, Amy leaves, and then Doctor Hawkins like turns to his helpers and is like, "You need to find out where Amy lives," <laughs> which almost sounded kind of <laughs> sinister. And I love the way that uh, as Doctor Hawkins, the way he talks, he almost sounds like a supervillain, just like cold yeah yeah um you know i guess like a, a doctor at least in a pulpy comic book world would sound like it's uh I, I like it a lot yeah um so amy and yuri once again are talking about dr hawkins and they watch footage of him um they talk about him being a big time conservative then they watch the um footage of dr hawkins getting shot during a riot um, if you look at the trivia section of IMDb, obviously that riot is sort of like a, a mirror of the Rodney King riots, uh, from back in the nineties. Right. So what do you think? I mean, this is basically the origin of Mantis here. Like, what do you think about that? I mean, it, it's an interesting origin how he, uh, didn't really care before he, he like, didn't think that like crime was that bad and blah 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 because he, he had never really been affected by it himself and you know he's a well-to-do like world famous doctor you know he gets called in mm-hmm. for like special cases you know he lives in a mansion not every doctor lives right, in a mansion you right know? right uh but yeah it, it's when he gets shot during the riots by the cops and uh uh I don't, I don't think we've gotten to it yet but there's like a trial um because he like sues the police department mm-hmm. and he loses the case or whatever you know so he didn't get justice right you know, right basically and yeah, I mean, I yeah, I like it too. I it's it's a it's a cool origin. I I like it. It's different. I just like that it's uh you know current. I mean, obviously, a yeah. lot of the superheroes that are you know popular today, they were made like 60, 70 years ago. Um, like this, uh, you know, just Mantis feels like yeah, just really current. Uh, anyway, it, it's a it's a good origin, and it gives him like good motivation. Um, and it's not the standard. Oh my parents were killed right, or right right you know i grew up poor or mm-hmm. i grew up like seeing all this like injustice or whatever it was just like this one thing that happened mm-hmm. um you know that uh affected him yes well said okay so 
they're watching the footage and then i don't know there's i guess there was some good music because i wrote down uh love the music oh yeah so dr hawkins watches i guess uh the footage of himself getting shot then his uh because now we're back at the mantis mansion uh Doc's helpers uh, tell him that uh, the gang trust is about to be broken. I guess they, they sit around and listen to, like, um, I guess, uh, you know, police uh, scanners. And uh, I think it was, like, a, a cell phone, <laughs> like, they were listening in or something. So now we get to see him change into Mantis. And uh, it's a... Uh... <laughs> It's a sequence. It's, a... <laughs> it's so cheesy that I loved it. He like sits in this like crazy. I think it's supposed to be like a. Is is the chair also supposed well, to? Well, he's. What's up? Yeah, so he's in his wheelchair mm-hmm. the whole time, and I mean the sequence is like not. It's 1994, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's a TV movie. Parts of the sequence are cool, mm-hmm. I think. A lot of and it's like all practical effects, yep. you know. So it's like. Things are coming out of the wall to put on his mask. Yeah, the mask coming out of the wall. comes out of an African mask. It's like they yeah, yeah, <laughs> they yeah. have to make it like they're just trying to, I guess, make it as like, you know, as black as possible. Pardon the the I don't know, the whatever. But yeah, they're just like we just Well, I I think so I thought that made sense because I mean his assistants. Right. No, it does make like, sense. Are, it does. Because his assistants his assistants are from Africa. Mm-hmm. And uh, they like help him with all his technology, right? And if so, I assumed that the implication was that they had helped him to make this stuff, so they like designed it, this right? Way. And also, I mean, it's like uh, basically it's his uh, you know bookcase from Adam West Batman. Yeah. If someone comes in, yeah, it's like a decorative. Yeah, they just like, go, oh, it looks like a decoration. Such lovely, you know, African masks you have here, Doctor Hawkins, and he's like, yes, I've been yeah. collecting them for years. So yeah, it definitely makes sense. Uh, but yeah, so. What I didn't understand, Steve, was when the exoskeleton suit comes out of the wall, mm. <laughs> how does it get put on him? Because because I'm thinking, OK, something's going to happen, like something is going to stand him up. Maybe mm-hmm. his wheelchair will like, you know, like pull up and like make him stand up and then the suit comes on him. But no, we got a shot of the suit coming towards him in like pieces. Yeah, that was weird. And the next thing you see, the suit's just on him, but he's still sitting in the chair, the wheelchair. <laughs> so how did it get on him, Steven? I don't know. It's in the director's <laughs> cut. Uh <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, now we're back in the chrysalis. Mantis flies overhead, and then below in the neighborhood. Uh, the was it the same two B boys from before? They were like working on their car, and then they're attacked by men with bazookas. Was it the same guys? I thought they were. I guess. Yeah. Uh, anyway, dudes with bazookas uh, show up, and they're dressed like the opposing gang. Um, and uh, let's see, um, Mantis flies after the bazooka thugs and causes them to crash. He shoots a harpoon at their car and then attaches that, the harpoon, which has like a wire on it, he attaches it to a bridge. Because uh, why not? Uh, Mantis chases, right, yeah, Mantis then chases after them on foot. Mantis fights them and takes, but he ends up taking a crowbar to the back that damages his Duracell batteries. <laughs> <laughs> which like uh and i mean i definitely have this begins some of my criticism of mantis i mean you know how i love a good fight scene i definitely feel like a lot of his action scenes are just him sitting there standing there going phew, 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 you know what right. i mean because they don't want him to like be like he's later on like when he's in uh his airplane car like you know he's with uh i can't remember the amy gina dave Do- dr amy yeah, yeah. And like she's like, oh, why don't you fire at blah blah? blah. He's like, oh, I don't have any offensive weapons on this. Right, yeah, but it's a philosophy. Thing. But isn't uh, judo like using your own opponents like <laughs> like moves against them, using their energy against them? He could just say, oh, I'm doing judo. Like, uh, well, and also it's self defense. Like, right? Yeah, exactly. You know. I mean, I'm just saying, like, at least in terms of uh, cinematically speaking. A man just sitting there with his wrist out firing at people isn't all that interesting. So that's all I'm saying. Yeah, because yeah, and because the effect of like the the little like darts or whatever mm-hmm. coming out mm-hmm. that paralyze people, it, it's not particularly cool looking. It doesn't even sound cool. No, like, I think they, cool uh, they again. I think that's one of the changes slash improvements they made for the for the series. But uh, anyway, that's what we have to deal with now. <laughs> so he falls down. And like one, like most of the other thugs are incapacitated, but one of them gets up and he's about to, 
uh, do something. I think like hit him again with the crowbar or a bat. Uh, but uh, the helpers show up and they pretend to be the cops. So the thugs uh, scurry off into the darkness. They hook Mantis up to their car and give him a jump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, like, like that would literally jump for kids. Right. Like take like a quarter inch jack, and you would stick into like a guitar amp, mm-hmm. and they like, stick that into him, and he's like, "Juice me up, mm-hmm. and uh, I'll meet you at wherever." Sure, I, I can't remember. So that. Mantis drives his car back home. Uh, female helper, and I have her name here, Ingia, I believe her name is. Says, "Oh, I forgot to mention something about her, mm-hmm. Steve. Uh, she, the actress." Is and you don't have to do the bumper, but she was in an episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine wow. uh, called The Visitor. Mm-hmm. Uh, she plays Karina, and it's arguably one of the best episodes of any Star Trek. Oh, series. good for her. Uh, she was in, mm-hmm. so That's she had a small part. Nice. In. So she says that uh, the more Doctor uses his uh, exoskeleton, uh, the more dependent he becomes on it. Uh, of course, Mantis is like he doesn't care because he just cares about stopping crime. Uh, Mantis then goes and he has he took one of the um, bazooka thugs with him. Uh, he's got him like uh, strapped up like on a table or whatever and blindfolded, um, and um, I guess sedated with the Mantis juice if you want to call it that. And he asks him, <laughs> uh, you know, which gang he's a member of, and the dude says that he's not affiliated, just that someone paid him. Um, so now we're at the meetup between the 10 K's and the dragons. And yeah, there's some great, <laughs> uh, Steve's, I, I, I do, before you, before you continue, I do want to point out in the chat, human hyperbole is here. He, Welcome. uh, they said that the mantis mask is cool. I will fight anyone on this. Thank you. So uh, after the podcast, uh, meet me out back, uh, human hyperbole. And, uh, we're going to, we're going to tussle. I'm gonna, I've got your. I'm gonna stage you. <laughs> I've got your back, human hyperbole. We're gonna give the old bums rush to your hell, Velasquez. <laughs> um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you the lumbly. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna lumbly. We're gonna you. freeze them like the mantis. Yeah, or something. Yeah. But uh, all right. So, I'm sorry. You still going? <laughs> I was just gonna say, like, hopefully, uh, for anyone just joining, we're making fun of the uh, the awful attempts this script has at like uh, street or like gangster yes. talk. Yeah, yeah, uh, in it's it. cine- cinematic white guy written gangster street talk. Uh, so yeah, yeah, okay. So they they meet up, and they're about. <laughs> I love it. They're about to have like this rumble, and uh, you know, I was expecting it was gonna be maybe more like how it was in, say, like a Boys in the Hood. People were just going to bring their guns and... No, no, no. A dude brings out nope. nunchucks. <laughs> it's more like... It's more Warriors oh, than Boys yeah. in the Hood. Oh, yeah. It's Warriors. What a, and you know what? For the Mantis world, that's perfectly fine. I'm okay. They're going to have a big karate fight. But then Mantis shows up and freezes them. Mantis shoots all the gang members... Uh, or most of them, except for like the leaders, and I was just like, uh, and for some reason, no one brought a gun. Um, <laughs> well, actually, a guy does end up pulling out a gun later, like like a like an assault rifle mm-hmm. or a machine gun or something. He doesn't use it, but it's like, why didn't you lead <laughs> with <laughs> your <laughs> giant gun, sir? Right. He then shows uh, the the gang because I think there was a commercial break here or something, and so we come back, and the other gang members are unfrozen, and now Mantis shows them the fake gang members. He tells them. <laughs> He gives him the greatest sort of reading rainbow speech ever. He's like, you need to keep learning or I'll be back. <laughs> like it's Yeah, uh, yeah. He's like, you're learning how to like get along. Yeah, as human um, beings. Human, yeah. Uh, and he's like, because uh, he basically tells them that, hey, these guys are getting paid, uh, you know, to make it seem like, uh, you know, he's getting paid to like wear the 10 K mm-hmm, colors, mm-hmm. the 10 K jewelry. And this guy's getting paid to like wear stuff for the dragons. And, you know, they're getting paid to like commit crimes in your name against, you know, the other gang right. to like break up the peace. And then, uh, that's when one of the gang leaders, the guy, the leader of the 10 K gang, he says something like, like he basically, what he's trying to say is like, no one's going to play me. Right, like that. right, right. But, but he says something else really weird. Yeah. Like, like no, one, no one's going to silly string you. Yeah, like, <laughs> it is. Like, no one's going to marionette me. Like, yeah, something yeah. <laughs> something ridiculous like that. Uh, no one's going to wash my back without my front. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I, that 
stupid speech by Manzas. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Uh, oh, yeah. They, it's like you, you have to like learn, continue learning, or I'll be – or and he says, I'll be back like the Terminator. Yeah, he really does. Well, like, he's, I'll be back. he's got that distorted voice, very similar to uh, RoboCop, which I got to see in 35mm yeah. last night at the New Beverly Cinema. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, by the way, the the actress we were just mentioning who was in Star Trek Blue Space Nine, she's in RoboCop 2. As who? Oh, I don't oh, know. Okay, no worries. All right. So uh, <laughs> so Lila, that's the name of the sort of white Karen lady who runs the news place. Uh, Lila tells Yuri that she put someone else on the Mantis story, and he's not happy about that. And then um, Lila then talks to Mantis. Um, I can't remember exactly where they met or how they did, but... Um, Mantis tell, oh yeah, oh yeah, so she's like trying to get a story out of him. He, she's just walking out of the news um, place and then Mantis shows up. And she's like, for 10, I'll give you 10 grand for an interview. And he says, I don't want your money. And then he stuns her. And <laughs> thank goodness he's a, you know, proper superhero and not some like, you know, uh, entertainment Weinstein-esque person. But anyway, he hypnotizes her. And, uh, in, I mean, and this is like classic pulp stuff. I was getting like shadow vibes all over here. And basically he, uh, sends her to give a message to Yuri, uh, later on. Um, because Yuri, he's talking to her about something. Then Lila just freaks out out of nowhere and tells, uh, <laughs> she starts going, this is Mantis. The gags are being set up. And like, right. I'm pretty sure they got rid of the hypnotism for the show, but I was just like, but they did. They got what rid a of way it. to like, uh, you know, that's a long walk to go around just to like give a message to just, some, just leave, just leave a note. Right. right. You're, you're in the guy's office. Leave a note. See, That uh, feels like of, Sam like, Raimi cheese to me. He's just like, oh man, well the shadow can hypnotize people like, uh, you know, why not mantis? Like, yeah. uh, uh, human hyperbole had written regarding the, uh, the street, dialogue mm -hmm. uh it's great when you can you cannot tell if they're trying to invent new in-universe slang or they're such bad writers that they're just missing that bad on the dialogue and m maybe they were trying to do some like in-universe yeah because it's would... not like this took place in new york or chicago or la so yeah right. yeah we can, we, i could go with that however <laughs> it's still funny this is what i don't think however because it like happens so often <laughs> i don't think so because like that's something like in battlestar galactica you know they use frack ah yes and, and in the 2099 universe they say shock right <laughs> so, but and but they just only use that like, right they don't like have like 30 different things because you'd be like what the hell is all this like weird what dialogue the shock you're talking you have, about <laughs> right but when you just have like one word right, that you're right. like using like people you know people will pick up on that oh this is like supposed to be x thing sure sure so uh yuri tries to call amy but she's not there um because she is showing up at antoine pike's home <laughs> and really can you blame her uh so um <laughs> she's not actually there yet um the coach is up there uh he confronts antoine pike says that he had to go through pike's desk um searching for something and he finds this big bag of money he's looking for like some keys or right something. right and uh, so he. So I, I'm confused. So if he's looking for keys, why did he think a bag uh, that was not jingling because there's no keys in it? Mm -hmm. It's like a bag of money. Why did he think like they'd be in there? I mean, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Like maybe he was going through like one of the bigger drawers and just like moved over some papers and saw the money poking out. Eh. No, but the, 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 it, was, it was like a bag of money. Right. And it had like a drawstring, so it must have been tied. I mean, I, I guess he might have put the money. I don't know. Whatever. I, I, this is this is a, a movie in which a guy sitting down somehow put <laughs> an exoskeleton <laughs> on uh, uh, without getting up. So eh, whatever. Right, right. <laughs> you got to go with it. You got to go with it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm over here. I'm over here peeling paint, bro. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right. So anyway, um, Pike tries to play it off like he was just skimming money off the top for donations. The coach doesn't believe him. Then Pike knocks him out and ties him to the bed. Then Amy shows up for a date. <laughs> Classic sitcom stuff, right? Yeah. Um, Mantis then flies over the city in the chrysalis, and he tells his helper that uh, Stark must have an inside man, and uh, which is perfect timing because that's when we discover that uh, it's... Uh, Pike, a.k.a. Steve James, is the inside man. And Amy also discovers that while trying to cook him dinner. Um, 
she uh, she turns to the Stark rally. Amy starts talking about Mantis to Pike. Then the phone rings. Pike answers it and leaves the room. Amy then finds the drugs he was going to use to plant on the coach, uh, which that yep. was like so late. I mean, you'd think, I mean, Pike seems like a pretty smart guy. Uh, like yeah. he hid, he had enough uh, smarts to hide the coach, but not enough to hide the, the drugs he was going to plant on him. Um, right and smart well you know what though i can believe it actually because i don't know if you noticed but in his uh, apartment uh his very nice apartment he had a drum set so he's a drummer and you know how they are <laughs> <laughs> brilliant that wins the podcast I mean, right there yeah, uh, yeah those are the that's a deep cut that no one but you myself and uh two others <laughs> any people. other musicians listening they might get it um yeah, so uh yeah so they go sit down. Anybody, anybody listening from Bo defunct label Bodog? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sure they've forgotten all about us. Um, I, I don't think. But anyway, this is the deepest of cuts. Let's 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 move sure, on, sure. man. I, I'm so tired of being. But I'm surprised this show at one point uh, they didn't like the doctor Amy. She didn't say, "Oh my god, he's trying to Bodog him." <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> That's a double whammy right there. Oh, man. Uh, so they go sit down on the couch together. Then Amy hears a noise. Then Amy says she's going to go out to get more garlic to try to escape from Pike. Um, Pike realizes that she knows. Amy goes to a phone booth. <laughs> uh, and then Pike grabs her. Um, Pike then tells Amy his whole plan in classic sort of supervillain fashion. Um, yeah. He says that basically um, one of his men are going to try to assassinate Stark, and then that will allow him to uh, implement martial law, something along those lines. Yeah, yeah basically they're going to do like a fake assassination mm -hmm. attempt, and then there'll be a riot. Like that'll get started. They already have like basically like police are going to be standing yeah, by. You like, know, the riot it's like police. what they did for Reagan, basically. <laughs> Yeah, and and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then the, the the police are gonna like start like beating down like proactively. Basically, the police are gonna instigate the riot. Right, right, right. Um, is what's gonna happen. But uh, I do want to say like shout uh, big kudos to Gina uh, Torres, the actress mm -hmm. here, because like uh, when Antoine Pike goes to like grab her down in the um, phone booth, and when he like and when he's messing with her upstairs, like it's really her, and he like kind of manhandles her a little bit, and like it. It's actually the best looking, like, kind of, like, action. I know it's not a fight scene, but, like, you know, kind of tussle. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was well choreographed. It, yeah. They did a good job. Yeah, uh, and it, it felt very realistic. And, like, I really liked how the uh, the sequence in the phone booth was filmed uh, also, uh, just, just to throw yeah. that in there. So, uh, and basically, he was going to say that uh, um, Pike is saying that um, Stark is going to run uptown and he's going to run downtown. Uh, Pike takes her to the top of the building to throw her off. And uh, just like in sort of Back to the Future 2, he throws her over. But surprise, surprise, she lands on the chrysalis. And then Mantis comes yep. up and fights Pike, although it's really not much. Dude, of it's just like Back to the Future 2. Like literally like the car rises up with her on the yep. hood. Like it's yep. shot for shot. Complete... Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's the TV movie. What do you want? Uh no, it's fine. I mean, and honestly, like, you know, one thing we haven't talked about, Steve, is the special effects mm -hmm. with the vehicle, mm -hmm. the flying car. They look pretty yeah, good. Yeah, oh, I agree. There's only one where he's, like, uh, chasing after the bazooka thugs, where you can tell it's, like, obviously superimposed there. And uh, But other than that, it's yeah. pretty good. Uh, it, yeah, the compositing is done really, really well, and they took care to... Um, the uh, the light the the lights from the headlights because mm. obviously it's like a miniature sure, or something sure, sure. you know like uh, the cars <laughs> sorry guys there weren't flying cars in 1994 what? Um, <laughs> yeah or now uh, <laughs> sorry to keep breaking your heart Aww. sorry to keep uh, bow dogging over everyone <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I prefer anyway, to call it um <laughs> damn it I forgot his last name I, I, stop phil doing me you hell stop <laughs> <laughs> oh man anyways uh nobody knows what we're talking about a uh, great uh that's that's how you want a podcast you want to uh, bring up things no one knows uh <laughs> it's called obscurity joke, so now podcast. that's what we do <laughs> <laughs> nothing's more obscure than some right joke right of course our, band, our old band sure. anyway so like when the Vehicle was like flying over like some of the thugs uh, earlier on and some people they took care to have the lighting like like match um, As like the movement of the miniature like that they were gonna composite in 
Um, there's a scene where the car is like supposed to be flying, but you, it's off camera, but you see like the headlights mm -hmm. in the reflection of like um, a building. Oh, yeah. That's got like a bunch of like uh, windows, windows mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, so there, there's a lot of like really nice production stuff like that with the special effects that really help to make it feel real and grounded. Yeah, that's uh, they were K and B special effects. Uh, and in case anyone's really into that, they again they work with Sam Raimi a lot. They started out on Evil Dead Two, and I think also worked on Dark Man. Um, but I was surprised how much we got to see the chrysalis. Like when they, me too. Like at the beginning, I thought, oh well, that's it. We're never going to see that again. But I guess Fox really sunk some money into this. Um, um, now, now, I will say, the design of the chrysalis is total. <laughs> oh, it's cheese ball. Total oh, shit. Yeah, it's 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 awful. very retro. It's yeah. Um, I mean, I it doesn't look good. I think it's like it's fun in a sort of retro sort of way. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like badass or anything. That's for sure. No, um, no. It, it's almost like they were like. Can we have something that's as bad as his mask? Oh, watch out! Can, can he drive? Can he drive something worse than his mask? Me, me and human hyperbole are gonna get, put the fill dough on you. Watch out! Look, I did. I did look up the mask uh, from the TV series uh -huh. when they updated it. It looks a lot better. All right. I'm well. As long as you can concede to that, then we'll we'll save yeah. the fill doughing for another time. Um, <laughs> okay, that sounds so uh, sexual and arousing. And... All right, so all right, th I do have a problem with this. Like, they're not really clear on exactly what Mantis's weaknesses are, and so when Pike sprays him with water during <laughs> yeah, the fight are. and shorts him out, <laughs> I'm just like, so that's it. All you have to do is spray Mantis with water, and then you can beat him, like. Actually, you can beat him if he just didn't check the weather report before he like went outside that day. <laughs> <laughs> like it's so fucking lame yeah. that like. So I wasn't surprised that some water beat him because he looks lame. Like, all right, we're moving on, man. We're not talking about the look for right now, okay? Okay. Uh, all right. So the coach. All right, right when um, Mantis is about to be taken out by Pike. The coach hits Pike with a shovel, knocking him over the edge of the building. And this time, there's no flying car to save him. He falls to his death. The man is dead. Now, Stark's meant... And, the, and, the, and, then, and then the coach's response is like... He was my he was friend. My friend. After he just killed him, and he's like, he was my friend. And, and we never see him ever oh, again. Oh, but you didn't hear the, <laughs> uh, the reply where Mantis goes, well, now oh, you have right. another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just made a new friend. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. W w he just killed his best friend. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not comforting. Like, do you want to get so, a beer with me, coach? <laughs> so then what does Mantis do later on? I know we're kind of skipping ahead. He writes him a check for $100,000. The doctor that's does for, like, his... Or... For murdering his friend. I mean, that's fair, right? Well, <laughs> he, he doesn't even make it out to him. He makes it out to the, uh, the club that he's running for the game. Right, right. So Mantis and Amy fly overhead. They catch up. Uh, they catch up everyone on the plot. Basically, uh, Yuri talks to a cameraman. He says he should have gone on the air to tell everyone about the gang setup that uh, that the Karen lady hip hypnotically told him about. <laughs> because that's what constitutes real news, right? But someone gives you a hypnotic yeah. message. Uh, yeah. But I mean, uh, at least you... they're explaining why he never reported on it, though. Yeah, uh, yeah that's good. So true. Stark shows up at his rally. Uh, <laughs> I love it. They're like, well, there's bulletproof glass on the podium. And it's just like the smallest and, and little like piece. Tiny. Yeah. yeah. Um, By the way, Steve, I, I, I did want to point out here that uh, even I probably have left a comment about he had tried to make a mask out of Legos, uh, a Mantis mask nice. out of Legos uh, when he was a kid. But he wrote me and three other kids, the entire Mantis fandom. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he had also written, which I do think it's funny because it's kind of true in comic books, you know, because being rich is a superpower. Sure. Oh, you know, yeah. and that's how it is a lot of times in comedy. I could see Mantis, Tony Stark, and Bruce Wayne all hanging out and like just sipping yeah. martinis and whatever. Oh, and the shadow too. Uh, so uh, yeah. Mantis uh, spots the riot copters, and uh, then just as planned, a guy shoots at Stark, and the riot cops show up and start beating on the crowd. And then uh, the riot copters are just uh, just happen to be equipped with machine guns. I mean, I guess that's believable. And start shooting at uh, a mantis in the chrysalis. They have a pretty decent like dogfight in the air here. I was kind of surprised. Um, mantis yeah. once again uses his uh, grappling hook or harpoon from the chrysalis 
to just sort of rip out like one of the the guns from one of the riot copters. Um, then one of the hel helicopters crashes for some reason into the into a building. I like I, it was so funny because like uh, the guy like next to the pilot was like, "Look out! You're about to hit that building." He's like, "Ah, oh, don't worry about it, good buddy. I gotta look out!" <laughs> and then it yeah. just explodes. It was like a very FMV yeah, game it, kind of. It's sequence. like man just didn't even do anything. It's like the guy was just too cocky and then ran into a yeah, building. Yeah. So Mantis sprays the entire crowd with the Mantis juice slash gas, and they all freeze, except for Chief Stark for some reason. Stark tries to pull a gun on Mantis. Mantis tries to hypnotize him, because, uh, you know, that's his way, because Mantis is uh, not, I guess, outwardly violent. And just like in the, um, in the footage of him in the, um, the riot, a random cop just shoots Stark out of nowhere, and then I'm asking the question, you know, why not Mantis? Uh, so we go to another film or scene, Dr. Hawkins, he goes into his van. For whatever reason, he goes into his van with um, his helpers. And I love how their van is just your, their, your basic conversion van that, mm -hmm. you know, FBI, like, people would listen in to, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, and the yeah. Mantis mobile flies home. I guess they did it that way so the reporters or whatever would be distracted and not concentrate on them um and um i guess the the helpers they're like you know why did that basically they ask why did that cop you know assassinate stark and he was like what well, and mantis is just like well i guess this goes deeper than we thought so i guess that answers right. that question uh now we're back at the ymca the coach is giving a big speech to the kids especially really little ones like and he's just like coach pike is dead <laughs> Like, maybe not that, but he's like, oh, he's gone, and now... He's like, he betrayed us, but does that right. mean that we're gonna, like... <laughs> There's, like, an eight-year-old sitting there, and it's like... Doing what we're doing. What happened to Coach Pike, Coach? It's like, well, he's a cheating son of a, you know, but... Yeah, he's not... Well, here's the thing. Coach Pike, he's not just dead. You murdered <laughs> him. <laughs> I had to kill Coach Pike. So we... But pretty sweet we got one hundred thousand dollars thousand dollars yeah he pulls out the check so yeah like. yeah um so now we're back with dr hawkins with his trainer again at his uh, awesome mansion and uh she hits on him but of course uh dr hawkins turns him down because uh you know there's nothing more uh, sexually gratifying than superhero work. Who needs the love of a good woman? Am I right, Yael? Right, um, right, right. So, but it's weird. They kind of do a little thing. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's like a pickup artist. You know, he's uh, <laughs> what do they call it? Uh, negging her, like or whatever, like whatever, like that. You like uh, do something negative. Right. I, I guess. Yeah, yeah, he's just a pickup artist. I haven't watched any of those videos in uh, three days. I don't know what you're VH1's talking about. VH1's mystery is uh, right around the corner. Oh, no. I don't know if you remember that. That's something we should watch. Uh, reality TV is your reality show? is your section, man. But oh, reality. Sh oh, there was a reality show from VH1 called The Pickup Artist. Oh, and, uh, right. It was all. It was all about like being a pickup artist, and the uh, main guy, the the teacher, the sensei. He was called. He called himself Mystery. <laughs> Yeah, I think you mentioned this in our uh, what is that Brett Hart show? Brett um, Brett Michaels uh, Rock of Love. Yeah, yeah. Please uh, see our Rock of Love episode, which might be our lowest watched episode of them all, even lower <laughs> than the comics. But uh, anyway, uh, so wow. we're almost done here. Um, basically, the trainer and Hawkins have sort of philosophical talk, um, and uh, Doctor Hawkins says that. Um, or the trainer is like, oh, he caught her son playing Mantis. And um, and she's like, I don't want him, you know, being involved in that kind of violence and stuff like that. And, and of course, Dr. Hawkins is like, well, what if Mantis was about peace or something like that? And um, I, uh, basically, in the end, uh, he... Or though the trainer is like, well, what if uh, I want him involved in a world of peace and blah, blah, blah. And then Dr. Hawkins in the end says... I believed in that world too, but then I realized that it doesn't exist. Ooh, heavy, heavy mm -hmm. shit at the end there. And that is Mantis, 1994, uh, the TV movie. Did you have anything to add on that last scene there in their little conversation? Uh, no, no. Uh, 
<laughs> I, I, I mean, what more is there to say? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's run this bumper and end this puck be. Uh, wait, we don't want that one. We want this one. question. All right, so uh, Hell Velasquez, um, a.k.a. guy who, I don't know, I got nothing. All right. Do you think Great. that Mantis, the TV movie, will separate it from the TV not show? Not the show, not the show. Oh, uh-oh, I don't think I like where this is going to go. Do you think that Mantis, the TV movie, should be tossed into the black hole of obscurity, never to be heard from again? Or remembered for a little bit uh, to the end of human time. Yeah, no, no, Steve, I was just saying that this is not the show that we're judging Mm -hmm. today. We're just judging the TV movie, Mm -hmm. which by all accounts seems very, very different from the TV show. Because I was reading that like the TV show, not only did they recast like almost the entire black portion of the cast, make them all white. uh, But they also like halfway through the season pull up Baywatch nights and start doing more sci-fi stuff. Like there's monsters, mm. there's time travel. Ooh, I don't uh, remember any of that. So I was almost, I was like, mm, time travel. <laughs> uh, but anyways, what we're talking about is the movie mm-hmm. here. What, what, what the, 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 <laughs> the pudding that we're trying to butter on our toast. Uh, you know, you know how the kids on the street say when you're, when you're putting in your toast. <laughs> what funny buttering your toast <laughs> nah man you, you take some pudding and you put it on the toast <laughs> that's, what the that's fuck? what all the games are doing <laughs> all right man what Yo, what's it, your it, freaking it, you're, verdict you're just, not as, you're just not as hard as sam uh <laughs> ham okay few men are <laughs> yeah anyways uh i say no forget this, this oh, is, oh oh i thought not good. i thought you would be in on this 100 percent. like this is this is highbrow cheese that, I mean, at least the kind of cheese that I like. To me, this this feels, eh, I mean, it sort of lacks the energy of a Sam Raimi movie, but it feels very like Dark Man. Um, and also. So, Human Hyper. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to cut you off. I mean, I was just, uh, uh, well, what does Human Hyperbole have to say? He said, fuck you, Steve. I don't know why he said, no, he, that's not what he said. He said, <laughs> he said that there's aliens or something like that at the end. He's like fighting wow. off an alien invention. Oh, yeah. I read that there's like something like his friends get like killed by like dinosaurs or something <laughs> in some post apocalyptic future. So he has to like pack up the mantis tech and like destroy it or wow. something to avoid this is the, th- that future from happening. This is how I imagine that mantis, the sort of the, the arc of mantis, the show. All right. So they made this superhero for you know the black audience uh for better or worse and then they were like because it was weird like fox in the 90s they were all about you know the urban um audience but then also nerds so on the same channel you have in living color martin and living single alongside the x files and briscoe county jr and mantis right so i think they were like pivoting they were like ah I guess black people aren't really into Mantis, so we're going to nerd it up and, uh, you know, add in dinosaurs or aliens or something. And this is just my, you know, this is just... Because this kind of happened with Sliders, right. too. Like they went real crazy with right, it right, right. Uh, towards the end, you know, as, in a desperate bid for, mm-hmm. like, ratings. And uh, you would think that people would see that this doesn't work. But uh, you know, you know what it is, man. I'm assuming everybody watched season two of Baywatch Nights, and they're just chasing that grail, bro. All right. Chasing the All right. grail. I'm gonna render my verdict if that's okay. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. I guess that, that's all right, man. So we'll, we'll... first off, I'm really surprised that you kind of didn't like this. I think it's uh, uh you're mopping me, man. You're really mopping me. fun cheat. <laughs> See, we've already gotten so much entertainment value out of this, like in the way that it's uh. I mean, all right, despite, okay, so yeah, it's cheesy, but they never, but they commit, basically. There's never any, like, uh, you know, like in the scene of, did you ever see Spider-Man Far From Home yet, the new one? No, no, I, I it's out for rent now, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rent it. <laughs> well, basically, there's a scene in there where they ask um, Dr. Octopus's name, and he tells them, and then they all laugh at it. It's like, that just shows that they don't, like, respect the source material in a, uh, you know, at all. And but here, I mean, his name, his name, his name is kind of like funny. Yeah, sounding. but it's like, supposed to be scary within the Spider-Man world, though. He's a villain for the love of 
he's scary, but you you can laugh at his name. All right, so you know if you want to you know, sign up, be, be a Disney guy. You know I mean, if that's what you want to be. You know, I haven't I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. But uh, <laughs> all right. Anyway, so, what I'm know, trying to I, say I the is that they committed to Mantis, the cast, and the writers and the director, and they even committed to the extra cheesy parts too. Because yes, that mask is cheesy. But I like it. I don't know. It's memorable in a way. Uh, and I also love the cheesy street talk, which we've been making fun of the whole time. Um, yeah, I, I just feel like it, like you said, like it doesn't like do anything all the way. Like to me, like it just it, it does some cheesy stuff, but it doesn't like do it enough. Uh, the ser- some serious stuff is good, but then it's mixed in with this. Uh, it, it just I don't know, man. I feel like they didn't like like they couldn't decide what kind of tone maybe they wanted? I, I like the tone. I think they, I mean, this to me, this feels like the typical 90s tone of a superhero movie, which is, you know, basically like, oh, we want to make Batman, but different. It, it, you know, it reminded me of the first Batman, reminded me of The Shadow. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a tone that I kind of miss. So, you know, there's definitely some nostalgia going on in here, but uh, I mean, I can live with a stalemate, so I guess it will be, shall ever be stalemate. So here we go. This is it. Those pathetic podcasters known as Obscurity Now have once again rendered a verdict of no contest. That's right, a stalemate. They've wasted everyone's time. They are just as lazy as Congress and twice as corrupt. Boo, I say. Tar and feather them. Get out the guillotine. Boo to stalemate and boo to Obscurity Now. So let me, let me ask you this: Would you be willing to check out the series? Uh, it sounds like I want to check out the last half of the uh, <laughs> series. Like it sounds great. Like uh, Human Hyperbole was saying that like the it got insane towards the end. Mm. They just kind of threw everything against the wall. Like there's nothing better, <laughs> nothing tastier <laughs> than when people nothing that throw has everything the, to the wall. Yeah. Yeah. With, with the, the, the desperate and a late '90s show, or actually a '90s show period, mm. full of desperation. <laughs> Uh, That's how you like your women, right? Breath. Fil- filled with desperation. <laughs> Whoa, I don't know. <laughs> That's not true, everybody. I don't want them gasping for the hey, last breath. Hey there, lady. <laughs> Do you hate your dad? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be your new daddy. Yeah, let's go over. I'll uh, butter your pudding your go. toast. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man exactly all right uh, c- c- come here girl let me febreze you a oh that sounds awful like I, I, I don't, that does you want to show me your fildo collection <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh any anything to report uh with wrestling with gaming like project wise uh, no, 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 nothing new. He hyperbole said that he shoots at aliens or people from the future with lasers out of his stupid, his great mask. <laughs> Why? It shoots uh, out of the mask? Boy, that must look ridiculous. Yeah, we'll have to check yeah, that it, out. Honestly, it sounds, you know what, Steve? We might want to revisit Mantis, but, um, the last like, three watch episodes. the last episode. I would, the last two. I, I don't know if I can. <laughs> All right. <laughs> sure. We'll put it on the list for the future. Um, but I have released a few things. There's a new episode of uh, Theme Park Legends, which is my podcast about people who work in the uh, theme park uh, industry. Uh, A dude who's training to be a roller coaster technician, basically. Um, I I was hoping he was training to be a roller coaster. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, there's a, actually there's a mantis villain. He's called the roller coaster master. Uh, no, yeah. no, no. Oh. like, like I, maybe it, that, that, it almost sounds like slang from mantis. Like I'm a roller coaster. Mm, yeah. <laughs> You don't roller coaster me, boy. Like, <laughs> there you go. That's even better. Yeah, there you go. All right. So uh, yeah, we're getting closer to the uh, my Kickstarter going live for Escape to Earth. So after we sign off here, um, before the show, before the credits roll, I'm going to play the trailer. Please check out the Kickstarter. Sign up uh, early so you can be notified when we go live. Um, and, uh, you know, that way we can inject a new IP into the world. That way someday I could have a Fox TV movie made of my comic book property. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you sound thrilled about that, uh, but uh, maybe, maybe we can maybe we can get Sam Ham. Ham. <laughs> Someone's getting drunk. Right. All right, let's end this. Okay, man. Uh, well, uh, we'll just have to put a pin in Mantis for now and revisit him later. Uh, we'll uh, see you guys next week as we begin. 
as we can, I'm getting drunk too. <laughs> so we continue to unearth even more obscure media only on Obscurity Now. Here's a Escape to Earth trailer. Goodbye. I'm having, I'm having a, a weird, weird, weird day. My name's Adam. Where I'm from, I'm known as the Zero Thief. Depending on who you ask, some might say I'm the best thief. But believe it or not, even the best screws up every once in a while. And that's what I did, and I had to make a fast getaway. Ended up crash landing on this bizarre planet. Turns out, I didn't get away fast enough. These winged freaks followed me here. It's just us here, Zero Thief, on this empty backwards planet. So start talking, either to me or my way. Okay, okay, I do have something to tell you. It's about the planet. It's not that empty. <laughs> Come on, man, I thought you were gonna die. Come on, Chris. Cut me loose. Behind you. Whoa. <laughs> thought I was done for. It was gonna be a light snack for a snarling creature. But then, she showed up riding on the back of one of those monsters like it was nothing. And with a wave of her hand, the other razor-toothed beast just stomped away. I'd never seen anyone like her before in my life. I thought I'd say something clever. Thanks, uh, have you seen my ship? She gave me a look that said more than words ever could, because I think she was trying to read my mind or something. And from there, things just got even weirder. This is Gate, 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 Gate. 30 pages of insane dinosaur action that will leave you hungry for more. Issue 1, crowdfunding now. Written and created by Stephen Honeycutt. Art by Antonio Brandao. Colors by Bruno Ferlani. Jump on now before the whole human race is extinct. Download the digital preview today. You've been enjoying Obscurity Now. A podcast that's recorded live to tape and streamed to Twitch and YouTube. Subscribe so you never miss an episode or hilarious quip. Take us with you by following the download links provided in the show notes to wherever you get podcasts. And take notice of our various social media links. If that's what you're into, I'm not here to judge. And make sure you join us live next week at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific as we continue to discuss more obscure media only on... Obscure, Obscure now. now.